All right, so let's take a look at this question here. We've got b of t, or b of x, excuse me, is equal to 4x cubed minus uh, 156x squared plus 1440x. And we want to find the absolute min and max on the interval 0 uh, to 15. So anytime we're asked to find mins or maxes, whether it's absolute mins or maxes like this, or local mins and maxes, or increasing, decreasing, the first thing that we want to do is take the first derivative of our function and then set it equal to zero so that we can find those critical points. And I always double check with polynomials like this, particularly that have a leading coefficient like this one here with 12, to see if that uh, 312 and that 1440, if those are multiples of 12, because if this factors, that would, if we factor out that 12, that makes things much easier to deal with, and we can factor out that 12. And this does happen a lot, for so watch for that. Um, and this leaves us with minus 6. Oops, that's 120. Sorry about that. It's like, that doesn't seem right. Should be 120. There we go. This makes much more sense now that it's x minus 6 and x minus 20. So we get two critical points. x is equal to 6 and x is equal to 20. Now, there are two critical points, but we're not going to use this one x equals 20 because we're only looking at this function from 0 to 15. 20 is outside of our interval, so even though it might be a min or a max, particularly a local min or a max, we don't care about that quote, that critical point for this question. We only care about 6 because that's in our interval. Now, when we're finding that absolute min or max, now once we've got our critical points, that's all we need along with our endpoints, and we just need to plug each of these values into our original function because, again, if where we have our absolute min or max is going to be either at one of those two endpoints or at our critical point that's in our interval. So when we plug these in, we plug, when we plug in 0, we get 0. When we plug in 6, we get 3,880. And again, you know, here we're literally plugging 6 into the original equation, not into the derivative. If you plug it into the derivative, you'll get 0. We're trying to see what the actual output is at that value. So we're evaluating that, and then when you plug in 15, you also get 0. So what we've learned here is that here is our absolute min at 0. We have another absolute min at 15, and then we have an absolute max at 6. It is always a good idea to verify this with Desmos. So I've got it graphed here. I have it in the home screen. You can, you know, literally only see um, part of the graph. And actually, I don't have the right graph there. There we go. Now it's the right graph. There we go. There's 0, 0. But I can only see 0, 0. But, you know, go back to our notes here. That maximum is at 3,880. So that's going to inform me about what to make my window. So I can see this a little bit better. So if you hit the little gear button, we can go on the x-axis. We know that we were looking from 0 to 15. And again, over here um, on this part of Desmos, oh no, I made it go away. <laughs> we'll type it in again. It's no big deal. So we've got v of x equals, see, even when I do my videos, I still am not always perfect, which is OK. Okay, plus 1440x. So when you want to get that restriction on there, you put those curly brackets, you get a zero, and then to get a greater than or equal or less than or equal to on my max, I hit option and then um, the greater than button, and it gives me that greater than or equal to. I'm not sure what I need, what you need to push on the PC, but I'm sure it's something similar. But we put that zero to 15 in the brackets. And then we can go here and say, OK, we're going to look at this from maybe negative 1 to 16. I make the x axis just a little bit bigger than what my interval is. And then the y axis, again, we'll start it at negative 1 here. We'll get the keyboard to go away. 
And then the maximum we had was 3,888. So if we go to like 4,000, there we go. There we can see the whole thing. Maybe even we'll go negative 10 or maybe even negative 100 there on the bottom. So we can see a little bit more. But there's the part of the graph that we're interested in. There's all the points that we found. We've got our maximum. We've got our minimum. It's all there. Now, if we wanted to have this be a little more general, and we wanted to find, so this was all that I asked on the worksheet, but I thought this is not a bad time for us to just, again, have one more question where we look at a function as a whole and think about, you know, where is it increasing, decreasing, mins, maxes, concavity. So now if we look at this, um, on negative infinity to infinity and find out all the information about this function. We already found those critical points. So let's copy those. Because again, this would be my first step, no matter what kind of problem I was doing, either one of these. And now that 20 is one of our critical points. And we absolutely could do the first derivative test to figure out if we have local mins or maxes. I mean, I think we've got a pretty good idea about what's going on with this, with what we did up above. But we basically, you can set up either intervals like that, or you can do a number line here where you've got six right there, 20 right there, and grab a number out of each of these intervals and plug each of these into that first derivative. So the first derivative at zero, because again, what we're checking here is whether we're increasing or decreasing, and the first derivative will tell us that. So when we plug in zero, we get 1,140, and so that tells us we're increasing. When we plug in seven, um, we are going to get a negative number. I don't have this one figured out exactly, but I know it's going to be negative, and it's going to be decreasing. And then when we plug in 10, we will get a positive number. And again, that's really all we have to know. Sometimes you can tell by looking at the equations, this one's a little bit harder since the numbers are a little bigger. Um, but I do know what's happening here, and I do know that this is what's going to happen. They're going to get positive and negatives, but I think it'd be a good idea to plug those into the derivative and make sure you actually get those. So, you know, what we've proved here is that 6 is a max, 20 is a min. We can also use that second derivative test, and again, that second derivative test is really nice because it also tells us where we're concave up and concave down. So the second derivative is 24x minus uh, 312. So if we set that equal to zero, we can find that possible point where we change possibly our concavity, and our possible point of inflection is 13. So that's our possible point of inflection. And the second derivative test, so that really is us just taking our two critical points and plugging in into the second derivative. But what this is also going to do is verify what's happening before that possible critical point or point of inflection, excuse me, and what's happening after. So again, if we make a little number line there, we're taking the number six and the number 20, we're plugging those into the second derivative, seeing what we get. When we plug in six, we get negative 168. So that tells us we're concave down here, which again verifies that we've got a max. And then when we plug in 20, you get 168, which tells us that our, we're concave up and that we have a minimum. And also, because we know how these things behave, before a maximum, we know we're increasing, after we're decreasing. Same with a minimum before we're decreasing, after we're increasing. So again, we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on with this whole thing. So my conclusions would be that this function is increasing from negative infinity to six, and then six, Oops, I just realized over here I wrote that same interval there twice. Hopefully you caught that before I did. <laughs> From This is usually where I catch those kinds of issues. It's when I'm writing out, oh yeah, that should be 6, 20 to infinity. And V is decreasing from 6 to 20. And then we have a local max. 
at 6, and when we plugged in 6, we got 3,888, 3, not 80, 88, and we have a local min at 20, negative 1,600, and again, I found that just by taking that and plugging that into our original function, we're concave down from negative infinity to 13, we're concave up from 13 to infinity, and we have a point of inflection at 13, 1,444. So again, I think it's really good to go into Desmos and check that all of these things that we just found by algebra, they're verified by what we see on the graph. So I'm going to go up here to, whoops, the function that we drew and apparently erase it again. <laughs> apparently that's what I'm just going to do today is erase it every time. So it's no big deal. But what's nice about doing all of that algebra is that now we know what those actual minimum and maximum values are, where that point of inflection is, and that helps us set our scale for our graph. So, you know, we've got our scale so that we could see it from 0 to 15, but now we need to see more of this. We need to go all the way out past 20. So let's go back to that gear button and let's go to, say, 25, and maybe we'll just go negative 5 to 25. And that maximum that we've got there, we can see it, but we can't see our minimum. And that was at negative 1,600. So if we go negative 2,000 to maybe positive 4,500 just to see everything, we can see all of the features of our graph. And again, because we did all that algebra, we are able to verify that this is where all of the important things are happening. We see all of our x-intercepts, we see our mins, we see our maxes. Our point of inflection is right there at that 13, 1,144. And we can see that, yep, all of our algebra is right and everything looks great.